All right, it's been a few days, but I have another series that I think you'll enjoy that I, I feel like I need to do this for myself, and I thought I'd bring you guys along. And here's what we're going to do. So there's, like to me, there's like three primary setups that you never know when you're in hunting scenarios which one of them you're going to need or which one of them you're going to end up using. The first one, of course, being prone. So as a rule, the closer you can get to the ground, the more steady you're going to be. So if you can shoot prone, that's the position you want to pick. But sometimes you can't shoot prone. So you're going to have to get up on your knees. You're going to have to shoot kneeling or sitting. So we're going to have uh, prone. We're going to have a kneeling position. And then we're going to have a standing position. And sometimes you just simply have to stand up because of where you're at. And every one of these positions kind of has their limitations. And where prone, maybe at 700, you start getting into that long range where kneeling at 400 could be your long range and standing 250, 300 yards could become long range. And so we need to know our limitations, but every one of these positions, every one of these positions has multiple ways that you can set up. And that's what this series is going to be about, is we're gonna try out multiple setups in each one of these positions. And we're gonna determine which one is giving me the best groups so that when I'm in the field and I need to kneel, I immediately know what position I need to go to. If I'm in the field and I'm standing, then I immediately know exactly what position that I need to be shooting from. If I'm laying prone, I immediately know exactly how I wanna set up. So the reality really is that if you know this, there's only, you narrow your positions down to three positions that you know are your best, most solid positions to use in the field in hunting scenarios that produce the most accurate shots from you and your rifle. Today, we're gonna to start in my favorite position and that is simply laying prone. Now, something that I've noticed in a lot of the backfire challenges and even in hunters, uh, even some of my customers and, and have made long shots and use no rear support. They'll have a bipod and then they'll just hold the rear of the rifle up. And I know we've all, we've all done this and if you can have consist, consistent results out of that, hey, more power to her, go for it, do whatever works for you. I have the most consistent results when I put a bipod in the front and something in the rear. A sandbag, I use my bottle rest when I'm hunting. Even out here, I've just pretty much uh, anymore, I just use the bottle rest. It's just solid for me as a sandbag. And so I always just shoot off of that. Most of my customers who I'm setting up rifles for end up getting a bottle rest as well. So it's just simulating exactly what I expect them to be doing. So that's just how I shoot it, how I tune the gun, how I sight everything in so that when you or myself are repeating that shot in the real world, you're repeating exactly how you've practiced and exactly how you've set up so you can get those consistent results. So that's what this is also gonna be. I do have one little idea that I'm gonna throw in here that I'll, I just wanna throw this out. You can, you can look for this video, but I always, you always have these people, and I just got done with this 10 shot series, and I had a couple shots that weren't perfect, but I believe that I could make perfect shots on every one of those no question asked, kill shots. And you always have these people that are saying, get closer to your animals, get closer, get closer, learn to hunt. And those kind of comments, and that's fine. I invite them, I have no problem with them. I understand that's just the way it is. Use the old 30-30 and get within 150, 200 yards. That's kind of the, the gold standard 50 years ago. So one video that I'm going to do is I'm going to address that a little bit. And I don't know what the outcome, but most of these people have no problem shooting rested against a tree or across the log and shooting at something at 150, 200 yards away, but have a problem with somebody laid up at 700 yards in the most solid position that you could get and take a shot. And I know there's variables with both, but I'm gonna make a video addressing that. We're gonna shoot a group at 200, give or take, rested on a log or against a tree and then we're gonna shoot a group at say 700 and we're gonna compare the groups just to see, you know, are they right? Are we right? And this isn't necessarily a right and a wrong in all of it, it's just what you can consistently do and that's what this is about. So 
let's do it. Let's get started. We are shooting to prone position, as I said. We're going to do it today with a rest and without a rear rest, and we're going to compare the group size. I am shooting a 7PRC with a 175 grain ELDX bullet. It's a hand load out of this rifle. Let's get to shooting. All right. Let's take a range, see what we got to work with. Six hundred and five yards on this rifle. I do not have a. I do not have this programmed for this rifle, but I have charts to go off of, which I do this on every package. I have three or four different charts I typically laminate up. On the back, I write down the elevation of each chart. So at 600 yards, this calls for 10.9 MOA. All right. All right, so the first three shots, I'm gonna use a rear rest. I'm gonna use my bottle rest. And then we're gonna take three shots with no rear rest. We're gonna shoot the bottle rest on the left side and the, the uh, no rest on the right side. Now, I'm not going to hold for the wind. The wind is kind of very variable. I'm going to just hold straight up. I'm going to try to wait and kind of shoot between gusts. That way the groups are not going to be affected according to how I held or called it wrong. I'm just going to hold straight up on everything. This is about group size more than it is about how close to our spot that we actually hit. All right, there's three on the left side. I felt pretty good on all three of those shots. It's pretty sunny out here, and so I can't see the the triangles that I that I drew up. I was hoping to see them a little more crisp, so I could really aim off the very tip of them, but they look more like black dots to me. It's a little breezy, and with this much sun, creates a lot of mirage. You can probably see it in the Swaro spotting scope there. Definitely have some mirage to cut through today. All right, let's shoot three without a rear rest. I'm gonna let this barrel cool down a little bit just so we have a good fair test and we'll do it again. All right, while I'm letting that barrel cool a couple minutes, I ran down here to the target. I wanna show you guys the group that I shot at 605 yards. This is a 7PRC shooting a 175 ELDX bullet. This is my son's gun. You guys have seen uh, him shoot this rifle. So I just grabbed his and um, I'm doing this with that. It's a Primo hunting rifle. I mean, that thing is light. It's five and a half pounds base rifle. Of course, the scope on there is about two pounds uh, plus rings and a break. So, I mean, you're somewhere around eight pounds. Uh, so it's just a great little hunting rifle and that's why I'm using it. But uh, I'm gonna show you guys the group here and then we'll run back. So I shot a really good group I and mean, you can see here the vertical on this is 
the vertical on this at 600 yards is maybe two inches. I should have brought a tape measure. Maybe two inches. I think I have a tape measure in the forerunner. I might bring it for the next shot so we can actually get some measurements. A little bit of left and right. There's about three and a half inches maybe. Left and right. A little breezy. I can't tell you why I'm hitting low. Maybe I grabbed the wrong chart. I'll have to double check the chart, but that's not what this is about. This is about group size and um, consistency. And this is sighted in for my son. Um, I do shoot different than he does. He puts his hands on the scope and, and shoots that way. Um, I do shoot this rifle different, so maybe that's why I have a different point of impact. But I'm going to do some of these tests with this rifle, so I'm going to maybe have to adjust, adjust that a little bit. So we're about uh, a minute and a quarter. Probably a minute and a quarter low, a little bit right. But like I said, we're just going to leave it exactly how it is so we print over here at the same place, and we're going to shoot this with no rear rest and see the group size difference. All right, so we're ready to do this without this. Um... So I was about one minute low, just maybe a minute and a quarter low without measuring it. And so of course, when I got back, I looked at my charts again. This is how easy it is to make mistakes. And this is why you have to come practice. I, I'm using the chart. I like this better. This is what I'm used to for shots like this. It always gives me the dope inside here. Let me see. Yeah, it always gives me the dope inside here. This was programmed for my 7SS. I have not reprogrammed it for the 7 Sherm or the, the 7 PRC. This is how easy it is to make mistakes. This was 605 yards. I looked at 600 and I said 10.9. And in my head, I was thinking 10.09. I don't know why, but I was. And so I just dialed to 10. So we're one minute low on what I dialed which if we had brought it up one minute, would have put us right into the, right, just maybe a quarter minute low, this much right. I'm happy with the group, not complaining. I'm going to leave it set just so the groups are in the same place. I'm gonna leave it set right where it's at and we're gonna do it again, just so we're printing at the same place. I can tell a big difference on how stable I am. All right, if I would have been shooting at a deer, I think I would have broke on his vitals pretty good every single time. It felt, it felt pretty good. Let's go take a look. All right, back up at the target. Sorry, I'm kind of out of breath. I ran over here. Okay, trying to get a little running in and get the blood pumping a little bit today. Okay, so here, first group. We'll measure it. It's about right at two inches vertically. Left and right don't really matter. We're at three and a half. I'm not too concerned about left and right just because you have wind. You always have that variable. I'm more looking at what we can control is up and down. And again, I just held right up, right up here on both of these. Like a like a uh, fool, I kind of looked at my number here at 10.09 instead of 10.9. I don't know why, but I did. So that would be moved up about one minute, which put us right there. 
if I would have been dialed up one minute. Nevertheless, it's all about groups. All right. Here is our no rest group. Actually pretty impressed with that with no rest. I can tell you with a rest, I was just like holding right there. I mean, it was just, it was dead steady. Without the rest, I was like this. And then here's the results. We printed pretty much in the same spot. Little, little bit less wind probably. And our vertical on that is center to center, five and a quarter inches. So it's uh, two versus five and a quarter for vertical. These two shots are really good. Then it's this one shot that went a little bit high. So two inches at 600 yards would be uh, about a 3.8 MOA. This at 600 yards is just under one MOA. So this is at 600. Not It's not that far. It's not that long range, but if you put this out to 800 yards, this group with a rear rest at 800 yards would have been approximately three inches, probably vertical. And the group over here without a rear rest would have been seven and a half inches vertical, give or take. So I'm actually pretty impressed with, with how good I shot that because I don't shoot with no rear rest almost ever. But that goes to show you, our vertical is twice as big without a rear rest as it is with a rear rest. If I would have dialed this perfectly, if I would have came up one MOA, I would have printed right here, right there. Same with that. Would we have killed a deer on every shot there? Yeah, probably. Would we have there? For sure. But I think both of them would have killed. However, if I'm going to take the option to put my bullet exactly where I'm holding versus, you know, three, four inches high of where I'm holding, I'm going to pick exact. So for me, setting up prone, I will always shoot with something on the rear of my rifle because I can always, if you can lay prone, you can always put something at the rear of your rifle. For you guys that are new to this and haven't seen my bottle rest, that's what that's all about is it gives you something to put on the rear of your rifle without feeling like you're dragging a sandbag with you in the woods. If you want to grab one, bottlerest.com. I appreciate your support. I am excited about what we have to come. we got some really good uh, positions coming up, and we're going to find out what is the best setup on every position. This potentially will save you a whole bunch of shots. Like me doing this is is yes i would encourage you to go out and do this but i'm gonna i'm gonna cut out a lot of shots for you because i pretty much promise you that what works the best for me will probably also work the best for you all right stay tuned this is episode one and we have episode two coming up thanks for watching appreciate your support